Hey guys, in this video let's review Dead End Request. As usual, I'll be checking its story, gameplay, graphics and music, so let's be on with the first game. Regarding its story, this one has a really nice hook in its plot, to right away attract the player, because the story presents us a really glitchy world, and a scene where maybe there's no more hope left. For a beginning, one may wonder, what is it all about? Why do we see this kind of world and characters suffering in this way? After a couple of cinematics and contents of this glitchy world, we get to see that Arata is a video game programmer who received a mysterious archive from his colleague, who's been missing for over one year. Right after that he decides to give it a check to the game they were programming back then, and casually there's another player in this glitchy game, known as World's Odyssey. From this point onward, Ordu and some other characters will get to understand the weird reality in which they live. For me it was fascinating because I start the game with a really different idea of what it was going to throw, and after a couple of chapters they start throwing plot twists like mad, and the story becomes better and better as the chapters go. For the second game at first it felt like it had also a really strong plot since the very beginning, because we get to see a really depressing intro and it didn't disappoint in the least, but this one felt a bit different because I had a high expectation just because of how it started. However, as it progresses, in the first chapters the tone goes a bit down, maybe to a point where it didn't really make sense to me because we get to understand a bit of the world, but it doesn't really add something of real interest, and sometimes it feels like the characters are a bit too naive as they do some really dumb things and the story is a bit mixed between really interesting moments and some boring ones. But once the first half of the game is reached, the story becomes better and better, starting to show some gruesome scenes. Perhaps something that I didn't like that much is that the main characters of the first game didn't do that much in this one. And I mean, after the whole mess they have to survive in order to get to this point, you will think something completely different, but don't let my words give you a bad impression of it. It had its moments. And in the last chapters, the story became better and better. Just to complement a bit this section, both games have some voice acting, primarily at the beginning and end of each chapter, or in important occasions. Just the voice acting of the bogies and the amalgamations of the second game weren't that good. Other than that, both of them are quite solid. I will say it is a 9 and a 7 regarding the story. As a side note, something that I enjoy a lot in these games is when they throw the same enemies in one game and another, in this case Mary Skelter. For its gameplay, both of them are quite similar. We explore the world in this third view, being able to take the lead while engaging, and its progression is quite linear. It is a bit hard to get lost in these games because they basically point you to the direction you should go. But being honest, I got a bit lost from time to time because some key items are a bit hidden in plain sight, in the corner of some rooms. And well, if you don't look at it patiently, you are going to miss them. But other than that, it is easy to progress. And the fighting system is decent in the first game. They definitely improve it in the second, because the purpose is to make the enemies bounce against walls or each other. But in the first game, this mechanic feels a bit clunky, because some enemies are quite heavy. The main mechanics of the game are simple. There are different attributes like star, soul, and each monster has a different weakness, so balancing out your team is the best option to traverse these dungeons, and just as special as your team if you are playing in hard mode. Other than that, as soon as you don't recklessly play the game, it is going to be hard to die in these battles. One mechanic that I enjoy a lot was that depending from the sequence of attacks you do, you may unlock a new skill, and that of course can clutch some battles, because you can deal some really powerful attacks without caring about your skill points. The majority of the game is balanced, I didn't feel any point where I had to go and grind, just the last bosses, those are the ones I will say, man they are quite hard, but interesting to fight. I'll say that the first game is an 8, and the second an 8.5. For the graphics, once again they are quite similar, most of the changes were done in their environment, because the first game has some colorful places compared to the second entry, where the whole story is presented in dark environments. Maybe I just felt that the first game was a bit slower in some animations, or some little cinematics were a bit laggy. This may be because these are the Switch versions. For a game that was released for the PS4 in 2018 and 2020, didn't have the best looks, if we compare them to other games of these consoles. But here we are not talking about a super realistic game, 
so it wouldn't feel fair to directly compare it to the full potential of the console, as it is a more cartoonish game or anime, whatever the term you prefer. And if we talk about the creativity of their enemies, I have a really divided opinion, because both games have enemies that are just plain boring, and some others that are really interesting, mainly the bosses, are the ones I love the most, because they are quite bizarre. Regarding this topic, I think both games deserve a 7. And for the music, all I gotta say is that I love both soundtracks a lot. Because the first game has solid metal tracks, and the second game focuses much more into electronic. I am not going to say that 100% of the tracks were perfect, but at least an 80% of them. To me, this means a 9 in both games. Dead and Request final scores are 8.2 and 7.8. I would recommend these games to those who enjoy anime games, with funny and dumb moments, but also ones with interesting plots, and both are quite fast to finish, around 35, 40 hours and 20s. And the link between the second game and the first one is better explained once you start your second round, where you can pretty much skip all the dialogues and just focus in why everything turned out like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.